Welcome to BASE, Beauty, Art, Style, and Entertainment. My name is Karina Mitchell. I am your host. I'm here today with Fred Williamson, the hammer. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, I've been wanting him on the show for quite some time, and he's here today. So don't you go away. We'll be right back with Fred. I paid the call for me before. Hello, Fred Williamson, and Yo, welcome to BASE. Yo, how you doing? <laughs> good, 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 good. Let me tell you, I did a Fred Williamson marathon. Uh-oh. <laughs> I went to the library, found as many movies as I could, and I sat there and watched them. But you and started at Gary, though, right? You started from Gary, right? See, that's something. I, I didn't know you shot a movie in Gary in the early days of your life. Mm -hmm. I know you did in 1996. Yeah, I shot two here with, with uh, two different mayors. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, and what was the name of those movies? Uh, Okay, I no problem, so no problem. Movies, I don't, I don't <laughs> you do? Yeah, they were good action movies. Oh, you got a lot of movies. Yeah, about 55. That's it. I was going to say 50. Yeah. I guess I missed those too. Yeah. Right. Oh, you're a great man. Let me tell you. Fred, I, back in the black exploitation, not exploitation, but the black movie. No, but you can use that word. I'll, okay. I'll clear it up for you. Okay, okay. The black superfly, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah. Black Caesar. Yeah. I loved it. Pay the cost to be the boss. Yeah, but you know what's great about Black Caesar for me was it, it, the relationship I had with my mother. Oh, really? And okay. The father, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, don't mess with mama. Okay. Which was what Original Gangsters was about. Okay. And, and Black Caesar, it was like back in the day, if you brought something home, I mean, way back in the day, if you brought something home that was new and different that they didn't buy for you, your mama would say, you stole that. Take it back. Okay. You know, okay. get that out of here. Right. right. So when I bought this condominium, she said, I can't live here. They would hang me. That's yeah, right. <laughs> said, Mom, you don't understand. You know, nobody's going to bother you. You're Tommy right. Gibbs' mother. She said, I can't live here. Wow. You know, so. so that was based off of Caesar's real life, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, yeah. right. I like the part where, where you bought beautiful gifts and you kept going to Tiffany. I, you know, I ah. enjoyed that. <laughs> Except in the end, Tiffany was my downfall. I got wow. blown. Out. I got shot in front of Tiffany. And you, you walked the whole New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, it was and a, it didn't was a, fall. It, I was like, you a bad dude. It was in the set. No, I did fall. fall. <laughs> I fell in the middle of the street. I dropped my box. Oh, you did. And everybody stepped over me. Nobody helped me, but one guy picked up the box. Now this wasn't. This wasn't really rehearsed. This was. These were not actors. When we were shooting this movie, they didn't know we were shooting it because I had the camera hid. Okay. The camera was hid. So when I fell in the middle of the street. People walked by me and looked at me, and nobody helped me. One guy picked up the box and handed it back to me, and I kept walking and stumbled across the street. So these were real people. They didn't know we were shooting a movie. Wow. Now you're doing that guerrilla shooting. But <laughs> yeah, I still do. I still do. That's where the fun is. The fun is guerrilla shooting. It is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Um, in the end, I was sad. You went back to your project, your old, yeah. the, the, the torn down buildings, it looked like war torn area, yeah. and you went back up in the building and you let the kids beat you up. <laughs> well, it's all about, you know, why? Recognize. You know, if they don't recognize, if you don't have the power in your own community, you can take the fall like anybody else. So these kids were another young, young generation coming up, didn't know Black Caesar, they okay. didn't know who I was, they okay. had no idea what they were doing. Okay. But if you saw the sequel, the sequel picked me up right from that same See, spot. See, I need to watch the sequel. I didn't Hell see the sequel. Hell up in Harlem. Hell up in Harlem. Oh, okay. That's what it they is. Okay. picked me up from the same spot. My boys came, picked me up, put me in an ambulance, and took me to Harlem Hospital. Oh, and you didn't die. No. <laughs> no, I didn't die. And while I was in the hospital recuperating, my father took over my business, which okay. was James Brown's song that they play all the time now, Papa Got a Brand New Bag. I love that so song. So that's where it came from. Okay. My old man took over my business. I gotta watch him. And, and, and he got serious about it and he didn't want to give it back. Right. So now I gotta fight my old man and his gang that he has to get my to get my reputation back. Wow. Now I'm gonna recommend that the young people watch uh, Black Caesar. It has great uh, a great stories to tell and a lot of meaningful uh, things in it, like you yeah. were just talking about. But so does Original Gangsters, you know, Original Gangsters. Yeah, we're gonna move up to you know, Original Gangsters. We're gonna come up to that. Don't, don't bother my mama. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that is so true. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, you were in so many movies. You created and produced and wrote, which was what I was really impressed with because a lot of times actors nowadays, they complain about not getting the best parts or not starring in roles. 
And I think it's partly due to them not wanting to create roles and produce for themselves, such as yourself and well, Spike that's Lee. Well, that's not so easy to do. You know, it's to, not? Everybody has a script, but nobody has the money to make the script. Oh, I see. But I came into the business defiant. And my defiance was, uh, you can't kill me in my movies. Uh, I win all my fights in my movies, and I get the girl at the end of the movie if I want her. Wow. Now. <laughs> you got to understand, this was not a proper time to do that. This was right. like in the, uh, 70s. in the 70s. So in order to make that happen, I had to go raise money and do my own movies. Because okay, the first I thing see. they want to do me in a movie is kill me and have Schwarzenegger avenge my death. You know, right. I, I kill Schwarzenegger, let me right. avenge his death. Exactly, you know? and we need but that. They, yeah, but that's easily said and more difficult done because Hollywood really don't need us as, as, a, as a black race, as black people. Hollywood don't need us to make money. You know, okay. They need us to make more money. Okay. Okay. They will mm -hmm. do the Bruce Willis and, and the Tom Cruise mm -hmm. and then throw in a black actor to bring in the black market, mm -hmm. but the black market is not there to finance or support the movie, it's to put the ice in and a little more gravy yes. on the movie so they can make millions of dollars without us. Yes. So to fit and be a part of the mainstream has never been my desire anyway. Okay. Because I know how they feel and I know they won't let me reach the height that I see in my own mind. Exactly, you know? exactly. So the best thing you can do is just go do your own thing and, and be satisfied about what you accomplish and appreciate what you've done in your life. That's my goal. You know, I never I never want to be uh, 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 extra or what have you, and I bought this book, $30 Film School. Yeah. Right. So that's where I learned about all the quick things to do. To well, being part of the system is, a, is the goal of, of, of people getting into the business, but that's not always the, the intelligent route to go. You don't want to be a part of the system. You want you want the system to just recognize you and create and, and, and you don't if they don't want to want you to be a part of it, then go do your own thing. Exactly. And that's what I admire the most about you, Fred, is that you have always done your own thing. Down to the uniform, custom made, the <laughs> white shoes. Who would think someone in football would do that? Everything in life is about marketing. Okay. You have in order to sell a project or a product People have to know that it exists. You can have the best product in the world, but if nobody knows it's there, what good is it? Okay, so I was a football player among hundreds of football players. Yes. So I was looking for a way to be unique and be different. Everybody had talent, okay? Uh, everybody is good, otherwise they wouldn't be a pro. Right. So you have to find something to distinguish yourself. So I went to the white shoes. So I was the first player to white, wear white shoes. The league fined me $150 a game, breaking the dress code. Yes. But that didn't matter. People would come to the game and they would know that guy down there, number 24, I don't know what his name is, but they call him the hammer. He's the one with the white shoes wow. on. So it's about marketing. It's about identity. Right. So you have to always be conscious of that. If you have something to sell, especially if what you're selling is yourself. Exactly. Now, being the hammer, did you study uh, martial arts or because I saw a film, you, you were in a Bruce Lee film. Yeah, I, I, I did martial arts during off season when I was playing pro football. I played pro okay. football for 10 years. So during off season, I did martial arts to stay in shape because I hated working out and exercising and lifting weights. I didn't, I didn't want muscles. You know, okay. I, I liked the, I liked my definition. I didn't want muscles all over the place. You know, yes. you have to change wardrobe. You start swelling up around the arm and right. neck and, <laughs> and chest. You got to change your whole wardrobe. Oh, so I, I wasn't about to do that. I just wanted to, you know, my 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 philosophy was you don't see you don't see muscles on a panther. All you wow. see is sleekness. Yeah. So I I did martial arts to stay in shape, not knowing that one day I would. Uh, be in the movies and being able to use martial arts. Wow, what was it like working with Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee was the best. He was a master at what he did, you know, and anytime you have an opportunity to study and work with Bruce Lee, then most definitely you're gonna, it's, it's, a good, it's a good learning tree, a good learning process. Right. Now, you are a black actor that I first saw in the cowboy. <laughs> in the cowboy films. Well. Great. <laughs> Again, it's about wanting to play out things that you want to do, okay? And at that time, again, in the 70s, there were no black cowboys. But I had just did a movie called MASH. Right. And it gave me a little notoriety mm -hmm. in Hollywood. So I went to uh, Paramount Studios and I said, listen, I want to do a film and I want to do a cowboy. And they said, well, I'll do a black cowboy. I said, I'll do it for 500000 I'll do the movie for 500000 he said, well, yeah, okay, well, we can't lose with that. What do you want to call the movie? I want to call the movie The Legend of Nigger Charlie. 
Yes. And they said, why do you want to call it that? I said, because that name would line people up around the block just to see what kind of movie it is. So I went to Fifth Avenue in New York. We put up a big, huge poster and says, he's coming. That's all they said, he's coming. Then uh, two weeks later, we took it down, put up a new poster with my with my shirt off and my arms crossed, I had two guns, and it says, Nigga Charlie has arrived. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so then the next poster was The Legend of Nigga Charlie, starring me and Deville Martin and Pedro Culley. So, uh, well, you, you got them going then. They, well, yeah, the lines like, were around the block for twice, that. <laughs> twice, twice, and it was And the movie was about me being a slave and, and mm -hmm. being mistreated by my slave uh, master and uh, finally taking him out and then uh, running to the West and becoming a gunfighter in the West. So it was, a, it was a timely project. Oh, great, great. So family, please go and get these legendary movies. I don't know if you can get that one. That one, uh, you know, I think they, they bury some of them, you know. Wow, no wonder I couldn't find as many no, as I would like to. No, they I mean, it's, it, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's better than what it was, but it's not where we want it to be. Yeah. So some of these films that, that depict these kind of heroes, they bury them. You know, they don't get seen. Do we bury them or no, Hollywood? Hollywood buries them. Oh, Hollywood okay. Bears them. Because you were the, the hero. Yeah. Talk about your latest movie, which was Original Gangsters. OG, OG. <laughs> it was shot right here in Gary. Right here in Gary. And we were so proud to watch that movie. Everybody knew everybody. It's so special to well, have I made that. A, I made a, I made the an locations. Attempt. I made an attempt to put as many Gary people into the film as I did. And there was a lot of guys that I had in the film who played the gangers. The gangsters were uh, so called trouble kids, you know? Mm -hmm. But when they worked in the movie, they were cool. I had not one problem out of any of those guys. Right. And I got them from the midnight football. Right, right, basketball. Or basketball, like that, yeah. basketball, where, uh, you know, where the, uh, all the gang, the gang bangers right. and the gang leaders hang out. Those guys showed me and Jim and Pam and the rest of the crew a great amount of respect. So it just shows that these kids just need something to do. Exactly. And somebody to believe in them. Yes. You know, I gave them a job to do each day. I had about 30, 35 of them. Mm -hmm. I gave them each a job to do, and I had had them coming to work like 6.30 in the morning, right. and they came. Nobody was late, they were on time. Wow. Okay, what do we do here? I said, okay, this time you go over there, when he walks out, you run, you run behind him, you say something. I gave them all something to do, and they all did it expertly. Wow. So it was cool, it was a great experience. It was a great experience to work with them, and I think some of them, uh, you know, learned a lot, yes. how, to, how to get along, and, right. and, I, and I paid them cash. Wow. <laughs> I paid them cash, and sometimes, uh, I would, I would deliberately pay a couple of guys more than what they were supposed to make, just to see how, you know what they were learning. And they'd yes. say, oh, "Mr. Williamson, you paid us too much here. Here's a hundred dollars back," you know. And then another guy would say, "He didn't work four days. You paid him for four days. He only worked three. And they go, "Yeah, he only worked for three. So it was, it was a great experience, yes. and it was a learning experience for them and for me. It was great. Right. How did you like being in your hometown and creating? How did you really like that? Well, I'm here all the time. I'm always looking for some some way to give something back to Gary. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a hometown. It's my hometown. If your hometown don't love you, you ain't got nothing, man. Okay. I mean, I can go to other cities where I live now and, and be the and be the local hero, but this is where I'm. This is home. You know, if they don't like you here, you got nothing. That's so beautiful. You know? <laughs> I think that is great. Yeah, you got nothing. And. I've been dreaming some things, too, that should happen in your well, life. Well, uh -oh. you really want to get into that? <laughs> well, no, not all that. <laughs> but, no, I think that you sh there should be a Fred Hammer Awards, film awards that should go on for years to come, and 
all the actors and movies and whatever should gather in Gary and we should honor you with an nah. award show. Yes. Nah, nah. The reason why I say yeah, they have an Oscar. So what? No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah. I got listen, I got my best buddy help help my best buddy get elected so mayor. Modest. I help my best buddy get elected we mayor. Need a That's cool right there. I don't need nothing else. <laughs> no. I, my buddy is in power. Fred That's is cool. Cuz I'm looking for changes in Gary. I ain't looking for nothing for me. I'm no. looking for changes in Fred Gary. Fred is too modest. Well, that listen. would bring no, a change. I, I, I got my man in power. I got Mayor Clay in power. I mean, that's name. that's it. That is so cool. But yeah. listen to me. I work with the Miss USA pageant. I saw them do a special, yeah. Channel 2, two years in a row. Yeah. They brought in film. They built a set. I thought, personally, we, we did it with our money. Yeah. Let's do it again with our people. Let's create something that we can bring this again. Because it was two years of excitement for me. You know, what we're doing now is, is we're putting together a... a an acting school. Okay. You know, we're trying to put put that together, an acting school and a film school. Okay. And a music music uh, all together in one facility. We that's on the table. Yes. Uh, we're putting together a film commission. Exactly. That's Good. on the table. Good. And these are all projects that I'm behind. Wow. Well, that's enough. Oh, I don't need nothing else. Wow. I don't, I don't you need know, no, tell me something. I don't need no adulation. <laughs> I got a couple of Super Bowl rings. That's my adulation. Wow. I, mean, I, don't, I don't need no. <laughs> I don't need no more personal adulations. What year was that? 67? 67. All right. <laughs> uh, you way up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you got knocked out. <laughs> you, way up. you way up, huh? All right. You got knocked out in this yeah. game, didn't you? No, no, I knocked myself out. <laughs> I knocked myself I tried to kill somebody, and, and uh, my aim was a little wrong. And his, I'm sorry. And his knee. No, the check cleared. <laughs> the check cleared. So everything was cool. I thought that was exciting to learn that information, but yeah. you got your Super Bowl ring, and that's that. Number 85, we need a throwback jersey, too. <laughs> no, 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 24, baby girl. Wow, what was 85? At Northwestern. <laughs> College. <laughs> <laughs> Northwestern. So your throwback is 24. Uh, my throwback is way back. I don't know, you know, <laughs> it was 87 at Frabel, so my throwback is way back. <laughs> Crazy. 87, 85, and 24. 24. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's a hot thing right now. Throwback that? jerseys. They're yeah. very popular. Yeah, you know, no, they can buy them on eBay. You can get my jerseys on eBay. It costs, okay. a, Good. costs a few bucks. If I autograph it, it costs even more. I am having such a great time. You're okay. one of the most special guests. I've interviewed quite a number of stars. But I'm local. I'm a homeboy. Yeah. That makes it work. Yeah, it makes it real special yeah. because. Um, I'm following somewhat in your footsteps with the television show, uh -huh. and I also like to go into film and possibly acting. Yeah, um, well, that's where we're putting together this this uh, this film school. We're 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 teaching teaching act acting. We're teaching them how to put productions together, mm -hmm. how to find the financing, how to market the film. This will all be in the school. Wow! I'll bring my knowledge to wow. that to the table of, of how to how to get your your uh, thing produced, and after you get it produced, what to do with it, yeah. how to market it, how to sell exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Because I can produce it, and I yeah. can shoot it, yeah. but it may not go anywhere. And we have people in the community who have shot yeah. beautiful movies. But, but there's a way to do it. Okay. Yeah. And you you are the man to show. Yeah. You're the man. And you don't want it, and not <laughs> necessarily having it on the movie screen is not really to your advantage anyway. Oh, no. From well, DVD nowadays? Well, from, from a monetary standpoint, they will always make more money than you. He who touches the money first makes the most money. So okay. if it goes theatrical and it costs ten million, and it makes ninety nine million, all you're going to get is a, is a is a is a bill saying you owe them five million each month because okay. they're going to tell you about how much expenses, you know, how many hot dogs, bubble gum, chewing gum, shoe shines, all of that gets billed back to your picture. Mm -hmm. So that's really unless you're part of the system and you're part of the distribution company, that's not the most intelligent way to go. Best way to go is is DVD, cable, video. And foreign, foreign is a market, foreign market that's wide open and accessible, especially to blacks. But Hollywood don't want you to know that, right? Because they never learned it. So they've been, they've been convinced that any film that has a black star doesn't make money in Europe. But that's that's a fallacy. It has to be. But it's a fallacy that's created by the people who buy the films in Europe because they want the people over here to think that so they can buy them cheap. So if they can buy them cheap, then they can make more money. Right. I know that's good for them, but it's bad for us. Okay. Okay, so we're going foreign. <laughs> foreign. I like that because I, I always wanted to film in China. <laughs> China, Japan. Japan, yeah. right. Big bucks. They play Africa. Mega. Oh, they man. Play big, well, the Africa, world is for us. Yeah, but Africa doesn't have any money. 
Okay. You know, Japan, China, that's cool. But Africa doesn't have any money. My films sell in East Africa and West Africa for maybe twenty five or thirty thousand. South Africa, hundred and twenty five thousand. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And you're very knowledgeable. That's what I really like about it. You're very knowledgeable. Yeah. Um I'm going to take a break, and when we return, I got something special for Fred, and I uh, think that you all will like it too, so don't you dare go away. Coming this fall, base holistic health television special. Learn to heal and balance yourself the natural way. Fred, I really didn't want you to s just give me you, you, a black and white picture. You painted sign it? your name. You do this? <laughs> yes. You, okay. Give it up. Okay. Now I didn't want up. that. Give it up. Instead. You did that? Yes. I got points behind my stash, baby girl. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I put them there and I, I got, took them down. I got points for them. <laughs> That's why it's not complete. When I go home, I'm going to complete it. You're going to complete it? Yes. Give me some points. Give me some points, baby girl. I'll yeah. put your points down there. Yeah. Because I, I had a terrible picture that I was working for. No, this is cool. No, it's good. Oh, good. Yeah, Thank it's, you. It's fresh and bright and good looking like me. Just okay. Just look good. All right. Thank you, but I want it autographed. No problem. <laughs> when we do it on the show, I do it after the show. On the show? Well, I don't want to stand up. If I stand up, well, if you stand up everything going to everything gonna be messed up. Let me hear right here. Well, you're going to allow me no, to stand up? No, here we go. Up? No, it's good. We, okay. We'll do it right here. It's good. My frame is not right. standing I can up. My I'm there. holding it. I got cool. it. <laughs> want me to personalize it? No, just said Fred the Hammer Williams. Not to Karina, because my name is on there already. Wait, that's a big one. I can handle it. I know how to do that. That's a smaller one. Looking good. Hold the bottom frame, baby. Thank you. There you go. All right. Oh, that is yeah, she got talent. She ain't showing. Just, <laughs> just give me some points. That's all. I'll be all right. Wow, this is one your mother would love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Talking about loving your Thank mother. You, I'll be sure that I'll get a print. Too. Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice. Thank you. Yeah, all yeah, right. yeah. So this is my one of my. Ways of honoring Ooh, yeah. someone that I admire so very much in the industry and um, for years it. to come, I will always admire you, Fred. Appreciate it. And I really appreciate you coming down to base. And I like to tell the audience, I'm thanking you for coming mm. on the show. And with that, I always tell people that base is on fire. Feel the heat. Bye now. <laughs>